Now love them or hate them, but probably generally hate them, private equity headhunters are an extremely important part of the recruiting ecosystem. Private equity firms, hedge funds, and other buy-side institutions are oftentimes too small in order to have their own robust recruiting function. As a result, these firms will hire headhunters, and these headhunters are responsible for canvassing the landscape, doing first-round interviews for candidates, as well as understanding the dynamic of recruiting in that given year. Now, it's really important to be aware of and sometimes very jarring because the recruiting process at the buy side level is so different from investment banking. For investment banking, a lot of the time, these firms are large enough where they'll have their own dedicated in-house recruiting function. They'll have someone who looks at all the resumes and is responsible for organizing campus events. However, private equity firms and hedge funds often only have between 10 and 30 investment professionals, so it can be difficult for one of them to also manage the recruiting process. This all means that most candidates undergoing buy-side recruiting will have had no prior exposure to headhunters, as they're coming from investment banks and consulting firms that don't actually use headhunters. So in this video, we're gonna go over headhunting. Specifically, we're gonna go over the major private equity headhunters in the United States, and then we're going to talk about some key observations and learnings you should have as you're dealing with these headhunters. I'll also let you know that this is an excerpt in the Peak Frameworks Private Equity Recruiting course, and if you're interested in learning how to build an LBO model or do case studies, you should check out our website. Now, I'm probably painting with a broad brush here, but I would say that these four headhunting firms cover the lion's share of all the major mega fund and upper middle market private equity firms. So if you want to work at most mega funds like KKR or Carlyle or big technology funds like Silver Lake or Toma Bravo, chances are one of these four headhunters is going to cover them. These firms include Amity Search Partners, CPI, Henkel Search Partners, and Ratio Advisors. It's really important that you recognize that these headhunters, they don't just control the associate level recruiting. If you want to move to a hedge fund after or an activist fund, or if you're going to go to business school and then come back to a private equity firm, you're going to be meeting with the same people. I can tell you that I met with specific headhunters from these firms in late 2015, and these people are still responsible for giving out interviews, sending out emails, and really really controlling relationships to firms. So I know it seems like a lot of pressure, but you have to make sure that you nail your first impression with them. And really what it boils down to is that 30 minute interview, which is largely behavioral. And this behavioral interview is going to steer more on the qualitative side, but you still have to take it very seriously. I would do at least five to 10 mock interviews with people either in the industry or who are also going for private equity or hedge funds or whatever it is that you want. When I was going to these interviews, there's a couple of key questions that I kept getting asked. The first question, which is very logical, is why do you want to do private equity or why are you recruiting for the specific category that you're looking at? Just like other qualitative questions, it should touch on past experiences and come off as authentic. They'll also likely ask you, why did you go to the specific investment bank or consulting firm that you're working at? And then why did you go to the specific group that you're at? So I was in Evercore in the tech team, so I had to have defensible answers for why I picked Evercore over other firms and why I ultimately wanted to do technology M&A. Other questions you should probably prepare for are tell me about a deal or work that you've been doing at your job. So I think already by that point, you should have your deals somewhat prepared. You should at least be able to talk to the qualitative aspects, know the enterprise value, all the high level figures. And you can check out our video on how to do a deal preparation if you need help with that. It's rare that a headhunter is going to ask specifically technical stuff, but I would still prepare some of the critical thinking type of questions like tell me about a business that you like or tell me about a stock that you've been following or tell me about a trend in the industry that you want to work in. I think these are all fair game. I've been asked all of those by different headhunters. Now, I'll also let you know that no one confidently knows when recruiting is going to kick off. People have different guesses and there's always whispers, but it's really unclear when it's actually going to happen. So I think you almost have to be in this constant state of preparation, do your tactical prep way in advance, because once those headhunter emails start coming out, it's a relatively short window until the first interviews are actually sent out. Now, there are a bunch of other key headhunting firms, but most of the time they'll only cover maybe two or three large cap clients. And if you're not as interested in the clients of a particular headhunter, I would actually probably organize those interviews earlier. The reason being is because it'll provide relatively good practice. There's still legitimate headhunters and they'll ask equally difficult questions, but it helps you get your reps in. Some of these other firms include Dynamic Search Partners, which is excellent for hedge funds, probably the best overall hedge fund headhunter. There is Gold Coast Search Partners, which spun out of CPI, Oxbridge Group, Carter Pierce, which is more West Coast focused, Bellcast, SG Partners, which has a couple of very large cap companies, 
as well as search one and go buy side. So if you are at a bulge bracket or an elite boutique, you should really expect to get emails from every single one of these headhunters. In fact, you're probably gonna emails from many more headhunters that I did not list. My general advice is don't even think about responding to an email until you feel like you're fully prepped. Once you respond to an email, you set the wheels in motion for your own recruiting process, and it's unwise to do unless you feel like you're very ready. So again, if you do want the full list of headhunters and the firms they cover, we have the coverage from 2020 last year's recruiting process in our course. So I'd like to go over some important considerations when dealing with headhunters. The first thing to really be aware of is their business model. Headhunters can be compensated between 15 and 30% of the first year salary for whatever position they hire. So if they are trying to place someone who is going to be a private equity associate that makes $300,000, that means that they'll get paid maybe 80 to $100,000 for a single hire. And that can go to show you why sometimes it feels like there's frenetic energy or very nervous energy because for them it's a huge payout that they're going to get if they can place you. I think this is just important to be aware of because their incentives might not always be aligned with yours. Their incentive is to place you as quickly and as efficiently as possible so they have more energy and time to focus on other candidates. For example, you might go to a coffee chat with a specific firm and these coffee chats are organized by the headhunters and a specific firm might really like you as a candidate. Now in this situation, a headhunter is very likely to try to steer you towards that firm and oftentimes pressure you to take that offer. They might organize your interview schedule such that it's the very first interview you have in the process, and when you do get an offer from that firm, it might be an exploding offer so you can't interview anywhere else. Now, it might seem like you have the control to go to other interviews, but at this point, the headhunter is really not incentivized to give you new interviews. They know you have an offer from this particular client that they represent, so they're going to get paid based off of that placement. Now, it doesn't always happen like this, but this is why I think clear communication to headhunters can be very important. It's great if you can go into the interview room and articulate the specific firms you want to work for. Now, the second really common thing I see headhunters do is try to typecast people. So let's say if you work in healthcare or if you work in a financial institutions group, you know, there's only so many people with your skill set. There's only so many people that will have worked on a pharmaceuticals deal or an insurance technology deal that's your cohort recruiting for private equity. So if you're one of those people, all the financial institution private equity firms are going to be targeting you. So even if you want to switch industries or go for another kind of firm like going to TMT, Headhunters are going to be very incentivized to place you at firms that they believe will be a good match. Now, another important observation is that headhunters do have control over the funnel, meaning that they can get rid of candidates from the process. So I don't care if you're the best firm in the best group on the street, if you don't take your behavioral seriously and you butcher your headhunter interviews, you just won't get interviews. It's honestly as simple as that. One last piece of advice I would share is I don't think you should try to go for private equity recruiting until you're absolutely ready. Now, what I mean by this is if you don't have a strong finance background or you come from a school that doesn't have a lot of alumni in the industry and you're not familiar with the process, if you step into the ring and you start talking to headhunters, you might set a bad impression that could impact your career for several years. I think there is merit of considering doing a third year in banking if you really don't feel like you're prepared, it's better to have deal experience, have technical experience, and be fully ready when you meet with headhunters. Now I know this does sound super crazy, but unfortunately that's just the reality of the situation, but it's much better to be aware of the potential pitfalls and struggles that people face in order to improve your chances of getting a great offer. So thanks for watching and good luck with recruiting.